drawback to some degree is that our music is very lyrical so that you miss the double entendre of it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I say I'm a mighty tight woman, well, okay, you know, tight, translate tight, wound up, you know, tight. But you and I know that tight can mean lots Absolutely. of different things, right? So um, the lyrical content, a lot of times when we go to Europe, we will uh, switch up the rhythms and the patterns that way, or we will do really famous blues songs that everybody will know, any blues lover would know, rather, I should say, so that that way we tear it up. Well, because the lyrics are significant, does mm -hmm. it make any difference that uh, there are different languages that you're, I mean, you're, you're singing in English, I assume? Yes. And you're singing to audiences that obviously speak other languages. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe not English at all. Yeah, it makes a difference somewhat, but the music is good in and of itself, and the passion is still there when you deliver it. Um, what I try to do when I perform is at least get the titles uh, in, um, in the language of where we are, and then I can introduce it, you know, that way, like, uh, um, uh, now this might not be correct in the correct form, but if I say Sucre Ange uh, Noir, then I'm a sweet black angel. And it might not be the right terms of anything. You know, I might not have it in the right sequence, but uh, I will say, you know, the angel part and flap my wings and Noir, you know, I, I can say that, you know, <laughs> Sucre. Uh, they can get it, you know, and we'll put it together. And then when I sing it, uh, most audiences will, will know some English, as opposed to in this country where we make fun of people even if they have an accent, you know. It's kind of painful that, that someone else will attempt English and we won't even, we won't even say hello, how are you in the, in the language of that person, you know. So we, we try that way and we've been well received, yeah. I mentioned Handy uh, before, uh -huh. uh, but I know that you've been the recipient of the award. Uh -huh. You want to see it? Yeah. See it. <laughs> well, actually, it looks different nowadays. Um, I won this back in 1990. Now it's a kind of looks like a lobster cracker. It's a it's a blue note um, on a little pedestal. The one I received looked like Handy. Yeah. Uh, W.C. Handy. W.C. Handy. Yes, 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 yes. And did the you, awards are called... Did you get a chance to meet him? I, I, no, I don't know what, no. his, you know what his era was. Yeah, he's, he's been gone. Bingo. But I have met his nieces, and they're Sapphire fans. Yeah. And every year there's a Handy Award um, ceremony in Memphis. And this year, I'm proud to say that uh, Andrew Fay was nominated. Um, that's Sapphire's utility woman. She plays anything with strings. But she was nominated for fiddle and mandolin, and uh, she's one of the only women players that has been nominated. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all of you play several instruments, don't you, in, in Sapphire? Um, Anne plays um, guitar and piano and, and plays the piss out of both of them. <laughs> Andra plays bass, mandolin, fiddle, and guitar, and, and plays some better than others, but, but she'll lay it down in such a way that, you know, she's, she's really good. I play, um, I play at guitar and harmonica, and I'll tell the world that I play just enough to keep from dividing the money by more than three. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I got, I've done the, on any given night, there might be 10 people in the audience that play better guitar than I do, but I've done the work to get on the stage. I think a lot of people don't realize how much business is involved in this business. Of course. Yeah, you just, you cannot have just talent. Do you have an agent? Yes. We have a, um, a booking agent. Our booking, Sapphire's booking agent is in San Francisco, and we have a manager who is in Pennsylvania. And the two jobs are really quite exclusive. And then we have a road manager too. So um, yeah, um, I, I guess one of my major contributions to the band is that I write a lot. And a lot of the songs are, that I've written have been quote unquote hits for us.
Yeah. Do other people play your songs? I just, uh, yesterday I opened my computer and I had one request um, for a royalty, a licensing for a song that I wrote called Cold Pizza and Warm Beer. It's about the night after a party. And I had another request for permission to record a song called 1-800-799-7233, which is the number of the National uh, Domestic uh, Violence Violent. Hotline. Yeah. So I had those two yesterday. Some people have recorded some songs. Uh, last month I had a request for Middle Age Blues Boogie. And uh, it's coming along. They're getting, oh, this is delightful. Um, a women's a cappella choir in New Jersey just recorded Big Ovaries Baby, which is a song that I wrote. You know, I've got Big Ovaries Baby. And they performed it at the National Women's Peace Conference or something at Rutgers University. Brought the house down, standing <laughs> ovation. People want to book them in Czechoslovakia and wherever, wherever. But that's been perhaps the greatest thrill in terms of uh, somebody else covering one of my songs that's so great. far. Yeah. Fabulous. Well, what about your own recordings? You've had a number of uh, recordings uh, that you've made. I mean, all Sapphire uh, has recorded seven CDs. I've recorded one solo CD, and I have one instructional video called How to Sing the Blues. It's on Homespun. And um, I'm working on, I'm going in the studio uh, next month uh, with Roddy Barnes and we're recording all classic blues, blues from the 20s and 30s, for the most part. And any contemporary blues will sound like it's from the 20s and 30s, <laughs> yeah, the way we're doing it. So we're working on a classic blues CD, and I'm working on another collection of songs. Um, I hope to tap some local musicians to help me out, uh, which are mainly topical songs. Um, like one song is called I Ain't Gonna Wear No Burka. And uh, yeah. Yeah, like, like behind this whole war thing, you know, Afghanistan and also Iraq, I'm kind of torn about what my position is or should be. I know I don't want no fighting, but I don't know that I want to be, uh, I don't want the Taliban controlling my life. Right. So all I know on the dotted line is that I ain't going to wear no burqa. And so, well, and also seeing it from a woman's point of view mm -hmm. is, is uh, obviously very oh important. My. And that's, I can't oh imagine my. living in, in that kind right. of environment. Right. It, um, uh, it would certainly squelch your mm -hmm. creative <laughs> juices, if, if, mm -hmm. uh, if nothing else. Yeah, so, so uh, I'm working on another chunk of material that, that deals with topical songs. So, um, yeah, you just, if you're a musician, you are always working. You are always working. Uh, whether it's an interview, or whether it's an um, email, or a mailing list, or a new set of uh, uh, promotional materials, or whether it's creating new music or trying to book a gig, um, getting on stage is the easy part. Yeah. It's only other. Yeah, other the way. travel. Yeah. As Ann says, they pay us to travel, they don't yeah. pay us to play. Yeah. You mentioned uh, teaching older folks uh, these days, but how much interest is there among young people in learning about the blues? Well, on, on the cruise just now, uh, there were several young bands, young, really, really good bands, and that was a thrill to see. Um, as long as it doesn't get commercial airplay, I, I don't know that we're ever going to bring the fold to it, you know. I don't know that, that young black kids have any access to this music whatsoever, um, unless it's in a college presentation mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. There's a Blues in the School program that's going on right now that's really good. Ann just finished one up in Michigan, so she's turning kids on. But um, I just read that that Tower Records is, is claiming bankruptcy. And that's one of the last so-called independent yeah. record chains that's a big chain that you could go into and find our music. Nowadays, the, the, the music powerhouses own the label, the radio station, mm -hmm. and the music store. So all you're going to hear is top 20. And it's getting worse and worse. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that XM Radio 